Print on CBC Radio 1. Um, let's talk UFOs. the excited chatter of U.S. Navy pilots flying high above Jacksonville, Florida in 2015. And if you're wondering what they are excited about seeing in the air, the answer is nobody knows. They were encountering unidentified flying objects or in the parlance of the Navy, UAPs, unexplained aerial phenomena. And that encounter was far from being an isolated experience. In a story published by the New York Times this week, a 10-year veteran Navy pilot said he was spotting UAPs throughout 2014 and 2015. In fact, the sightings have become so frequent that the U.S. Navy set down new guidelines for its pilots who have close encounters with darting high-flying objects. That, in turn, has set off what some are calling a new golden age for UFO enthusiasts. Now, it's worth uh, remembering that the Pentagon in 2007 created the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program that looked at unidentified flying objects, or UAPs, unexplained aerial phenomenon. It was set up at the urging of a Democratic senator from Nevada by the name of Harry Reid. It lasted for about five years and Harry Reid just happened to be friends with a billionaire by the name of Robert Bigelow, the owner of Bigelow Aerospace, who also was very into this subject. Listen to a bit of this 2017 interview with Robert Bigelow on 60 Minutes. Do you believe in aliens? I am absolutely convinced. That's all there is to it. Do you also believe that UFOs have come to Earth? There has been and is an existing presence, an uh, MET presence. And I spent millions and millions, I probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the United States has ever spent on this subject. Is it risky for you to say, you know, in public that you believe I don't in UFOs that. and aliens? I don't care. You don't worry that some people will say, did you hear that guy? He sounds like he's crazy. I don't care. Why not? It's not going to change reality of what I know. So according to people who have talked to the pilots uh, who have seen these objects, they see them moving at speeds and making maneuvers that uh, their own engineers have not seen, uh, rising 80,000 feet above an ocean and then dipping down even into the ocean and back up at 80,000 feet. This is the kind of thing they're reporting. Uh, and top gunfighter pilots are not the only ones spotting strange things in the night sky. For 30 years, UF research or ufology research has tracked ufo reports across canada here are some of the numbers from the group's 2018 report last year was a relatively quiet one for sky watchers on this side of the border in total 937 ufo sightings were reported in canada in 2018 that's the lowest number on record since 2004 have the keenest eyes when it comes to night sky mysteries. The province accounts for 23% of the population, but 41% of all Canadian UFO reports. Ontario was second with 24% of sightings. The typical sighting lasted about 16 minutes, and they vary wildly. Everything from bright balloon-shaped objects in the sky to first-hand interactions with aliens at home. 5% of all UFO reports are true mysteries, classified as unexplained. Those are numbers from the Winnipeg-based organization U UFOlogy Research. The group released its annual report into UFO sightings earlier this month. Chris Rodkowski is a researcher with the group. He's the author of several books on UFOs. He's in our Winnipeg studio. Hello. Hello. Am I saying that right? You, ufology? How do you ufology. say it? Ufology. Ufology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ufology. Okay. Um, uh, well, first of all, um, what are they aliens? Could they be drones? Like, what do you think those pilots are seeing? Well, uh, that's a, a good question. There's, uh, you, you have to look at the perspective that these are uh, pilots who are, you know, uh, protecting uh, the borders of the United States, and they've flown many, many hours. And if they're saying you've seen things that uh, they have never seen before and defy explanation, then you have to give that a little bit of credence. At the same time, we know that a lot of uh, 
that experiments are being done. There are classified programs even above the, uh, the pay levels of some of these pilots, and it's possible that it's some classified program. But, or maybe, uh, if not by the U.S., by another ab absolutely, by China. Absolutely. Knows, right? in, in fact, every uh, every week uh, there are incursions by the uh, Russians, for example, into the United States uh, airspace, and those are reported on very uh, widely, and they're acted upon. And when you hear about some of these pilots saying, well, these things have been pacing our planes for a, a couple of weeks, and you wonder, well, if, if that's true, then how come those incursions aren't being acted upon? So this, the, these stories, and the, the story coming out of the New York Times and others, raises a few questions uh, more than uh, supplying some answers, and it, it's certainly fascinating, uh, and I think we have to be cautious about uh, fully accepting the, you know, the possibility that aliens are invading Earth or something, but uh, I think the idea is that these are very interesting and uh, they're serious. I mean, the incursions into our airspace uh, is something we have to take very, very seriously, both in the United States and in Canada. So we heard some of the numbers. Can you um, tell us some of the stories of Canadian sightings? What, what stories have stood out for you? Well, I mean, over uh, the years we've been looking at uh, almost a thousand uh, cases in Canada for at least uh, you know about ten years or so, and they dipped down a little bit uh, last year. But you know, there are reports of translucent triangles that people are seeing flying over their farmlands uh, off to uh, the east coast. Uh, there are some very well witnessed objects, like a, a round balloon-like object that was flying against the wind and uh, was seen by uh, several people, including some very good and experienced investigators. And then we have reports made to Transport Canada by experienced pilots flying. Uh, over various uh, parts of Canada. So we know that there are some well-witnessed and well-reported well investigations of, of cases that are ongoing, and uh, some make it into military case books and some don't. And do, is there a way to track what, what the Canadian military um, pilots might be seeing? Now, unfortunately, we don't have full access. Uh, we're a civilian organization, so we don't have full access to a lot of the information, but we do have reports that are filed through North Bay, through NORAD, uh, so we do know that reports are, f are going in there. That's something we don't have, or the United States doesn't have, after, after uh, the United States Air Force's Project Blue Book, which looked into UFOs, uh, finished about 1969. Uh, there's been sort of a black hole. We don't know exactly what's been seen until these recent reports uh, from pilots. We don't have the official reports. We have pilot testimony, so we don't have the investigations. But we do know that if you know reports are I mean, constantly uh, being reported in Canada, we have a very good record. National Archives in Ottawa has a very thorough record of UFOs uh, being reported in Canada, five or six thousand cases uh, going right up to the present time, and we continue to monitor those. That they, they used to be collected by the National Research Council, didn't they? Right. In fact, uh, that was how this all started. The RCMP made a deal, uh, or sorry, the NRC made a deal with the RCMP to investigate UFO reports, and they came into the NRC through the Pittsburgh Institute of Astrophysics, and uh, that program was terminated in about 1995, meteoritics was sort of phased out, people are interested in that, one of the other things are retired, and now the NRC was, and uh, you know, the CSA focused more on things like the uh, Canada Arms, so, uh, and yet the reports continue to be filed, and those are what we continue to get today. So, for 30 years, your group has released annual reports. Uh, why do you compile them? Out of sight of curiosity, my background uh, is in science and uh, in education, and when I was at uh, university, I, uh, my professors were insisting that UFOs were nonsense, but of course uh, the UFO reports kept coming into the department where people wanted explanations of what they had seen. I took them on as a as an undergraduate student at first and uh, thought I would get in good with my props. And I, after talking with uh, people, I, I found that most cases could be explained, but people just wanted some uh, reassurance that they weren't being considered crazy and there were some cases that I couldn't explain and that kept me going. I, I know the, the possibility that uh, interstellar, interstellar travel is uh, is real and yet the, the distances are so vast it's unlikely we're being visited. Uh, but at the same time we have this paradox that people are reporting some very unusual objects in our skies. So uh, out of scientific curiosity I'm wondering well what exactly is going on and that's uh, that's kept me going. Interstellar travel, it's been happening for so long you think we would um, that that one of those things we'd figure it out. Well, absolutely. And then again, somebody might argue that somebody has. <laughs> exactly. And it's on a Pentagon base somewhere. <laughs> exactly. And is it, you know, it certainly could be some advanced uh, tech from, uh, from Earth, but we don't see any evidence of that in terms of the, uh, the literature. We don't see uh, a consistent pattern in that regard. You know, we still are flying. Uh, uh, heavy lift rockets to, to get uh, satellites into orbit. Uh, even uh, Elon Musk uh, had to use a, a Falcon 7 uh, to get these uh, 100 or 60 uh, uh, 
uh, satellites in orbit just this past week. So, you know, we're still using some very antiquated text, uh, tech, so if there's something a little more advanced out there, we'd be very interested indeed. Uh, have you ever seen one? No, never. You know, I've been out from. Uh, That's many... what doesn't seem fair that you wouldn't <laughs> see one. Exactly. It's just they're they're just uh, teasing me, I suppose. No, I've been out with many people. I've talked to pilots who've seen things. I've talked to people from all walks of life, young and old, butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, everybody, uh, and they they're very sincere. And what do you do? Now, there admittedly there are some uh, uh, people who are making uh, light of this. There's a, there's a giggle factor involved. There's people who are hoaxing. There's people who are in it for money for fame and glory and so forth to get their name in the paper or on CBC uh, but uh, at the same time you know we can explain the vast majority and there are some cases which are truly puzzling that's not to say that the aliens are here but it is saying that there's an interesting phenomenon that I think science has to take a closer look at well some of the reporting suggests that just the um, the sophistication of whatever they're seeing uh, that's something that would go from 80,000 feet to the surface of the ocean or below and then back to 80,000 feet in short time that defies physics that the pilots are reporting. Indeed, that would defy physics if that's what was really happening. And remember, these are observational capabilities, and a lot of what was being reported are things that are seen on uh, radar tracks uh, and also on uh, some uh, uh, um, uh, cameras for the, on some of the aircraft. And um, So that's they, different than the naked eye, obviously. That's yeah. different than the naked eye. Uh, some pilots are reporting some naked eye sightings, but some are reporting uh, things that are seen on a, technically through uh, other observational uh, tactics and it's just a matter we have to get more information I know these are fantastic uh, but the trouble is they're truly fantastic and uh, are they bending physics are they breaking physics laws or just seem to be bending physics I mean I, I watched a magician saw a woman in half and you know that seems to defy physics to me but I'm uh, I, I know that there's probably more to it than that so is it is it something that's visual is it something that's a trick of the eye or is there something real going on? I had to smile when I saw that uh, Raytheon, the big defense contractor, has actually um, uh, boasted um, about its radar systems because it caught something on video. <laughs> so, Absolutely. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so, but what is it about UFOs that inspire so much curiosity, so much wonder, even fear? Like what, the, the, the concept. Well, there's two things. One is that we live in the uh, Steven Spielberg, perhaps the James Cameron. Uh, uh, generation now where you can look on uh, you know films and movies and uh, it's sort of we're used to seeing aliens visiting earth you know uh, Thanos uh, uh, you know was uh, probably the best example uh, but uh, at the same time uh, we have this innate quest within us uh, are we alone in the universe and ever since uh, we started looking up at the stars um, many many generations ago we have this idea are we alone is there something up there greater than us that's that's helping us along or, or hindering us in some ways and, and people are in fact looking to the stars as uh, saviors in fact uh, uh, the uh, aliens and saviors motif has been around for quite some time and when you have a situation like a planet that seems to be in turmoil uh, economically climate <laughs> as well and politically uh, people will look to other solutions rather than coming up with uh, ways of fixing it themselves and how do you think what people want to believe affects how they interpret what they see oh uh, very much so in fact uh, we, you can have two people side by side. One is a, uh, a believer in UFOs and one is a, a definite disbeliever. And they'll have two different interpretations of what they're observing. And the religious beliefs also uh, play an important part. In fact, uh, some would say that UFOs are a new religion. And there's been a number of interesting books published as, as, actually over the past uh, five years or so documenting this. And uh, it's a really interesting aspect of sociology and uh, religious studies now that have UFOs become the new religion. And it's a matter of belief, but at the same time, if you have tangible witness testimony and instruments uh, detecting UFOs that seem to defy physics, that's beyond belief. And uh, one has to take a look at that very seriously. So I, what I'm saying is that some of these reports and the news stories uh, in media are absolutely uh, riveting and fascinating, but at the same time, we should exercise some caution. We have to look at uh, who's uh, uh, speaking, who's making the, the statements, and what actual physical evidence is there. I'd like to see some additional data provided and move forward from there. And um, uh, how do you interpret the Pentagon response then to pilot sightings and the creation of guidelines? 
Alliance for Navy pilots? What does that say about this moment in the research of this this area? Well, I don't think we've entered a new era necessarily because uh, the Pentagon has been interested in UFOs for quite some time. I mentioned Project Blue Book, which existed in the, in the 50s and into uh, the uh, late 1960s, uh, studying UFOs and collecting UFO reports, not just from military personnel, but from the general public. So there have been studies like that before. In Canada, we had our own versions of that. Uh, there was a Project Second Story, and before that, a Project Magnet, which investigated and looked at Canadian UFO reports. And uh, there have been a number of organizations looking at these. Uh, certainly, the ufology research has uh, taken over some of this mantle over the past little while, looking at both official uh, reported UFOs and also uh, reports coming in through civilian organizations and uh, UFO organizations themselves. So there have been organizations looking at this, so the fact that the Pentagon uh, is coming up with new guidelines for dealing with the reports that are flooding in from uh, some of their pilots, uh, it's not surprising, but uh, uh, it'll be interesting to know more about what's going to be done with those reports. In fact, there's some suggestion that uh, the Pentagon will, in fact, be looking at those reports, studying those reports, collecting those reports, but we'll never hear from them because they've been they will be classified, certainly because some of the, the uh, pilots that are uh, making the sightings are in classified missions, and one would not expect uh, that we would hear more information about those cases. And I guess the other thing that I've been reading is that um, the the stigma around reporting has has uh, is is less now um, that pilots might have been seeing things that they thought were questionable for a while, but they didn't think they could talk about them. That's Absolutely. kind of an interesting... It is interesting, although we've had reports from pilots for quite some time. Uh, uh, there are many reports uh, from pilots on record over the years. Uh, in fact, Navy pilots have been reporting things. In fact, I think there were some cases in the 1970s from Navy pilots that did manage to leak out. So we do have records of um, military pilots. There's actually a directive um, on the books uh, in Canada and the United States um, uh, called Surveys, and uh, what it does, it's, it's re regulations for reporting UFOs, and there's actually a directive uh, for all pilots, military and civilian, to report uh, what is described as unidentified flying objects. That's actually the term used in the official manual for the, the flight procedures uh, to authorities. So there's something on the books for all pilots to report these things. And it's true, with more people come forward, uh, the stigma is lessened. It's uh, uh, no longer something to uh, be ashamed of. I mean, everybody seems to have a story. But at the same time, our studies have shown, and other studies uh, show this is congruent, that around 10% of the Canadian population, in fact, 10% of the North American population, believe they've seen UFOs. That's a significant number of people in Canada alone. We're looking at you know, three to four million people. So uh, if you've seen a UFO, you're in very good company indeed. And as I say, we have reports from all walks of life, uh, very many uh, professions and so forth. And um, you you still call them UFOs as opposed to unexplained aerial phenomena? You're not bending to the U.S. military um no, and the reason is because UFO was once uh, the, the phrase that was uh, taboo uh, for the longest time. Because it used to be flying saucers, and then uh, the military decided we should call them UFOs so people don't think they're flying saucers from another planet. And over time, UFO became to, uh, to, know, uh, to know that. So I think changing the term won't make it any different from uh, in people's minds what we're talking about. Fascinating stuff. Chris Rutkowski, thanks for speaking with me today. No problem, thank you. That is Chris Rutkowski. He's a researcher with the, the organization called Ufology, Ufology. Why can I not say that? Ufology Research, and he joins us from our Winnipeg studio. Let us know what you think of what he's saying. You can tweet us at The Current CBC. Find us on Facebook. Send us an email from our website, cbc.ca slash the current. That is our program for today. Stay with Radio 1 for Q. Weird Al Yankovic is on the program to talk All about. All right. So uh, tell us what you think of that. I, I, well, I am just glad to hear some intelligent reporting on the UFO phenomenon. I, I was actually dabbling around this morning with covering this, you know, a legitimate serious story in the New York Times uh, about UFOs, and I'm glad to hear, you know, some serious journalistic attention being paid to it. Of course, we have to go to the Canadian Broadcasting 
Corporation to find any intelligent reporting. I am sure while that was <clears throat> going on on CBC, NPR was uh, probably, you know, talking about some transgender Eskimo uh, having uh, its feelings hurt or something, or uh, BBC was talking about Brexit or whatever while the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. By the way, this is, I found this on this serious uh, uh, satellite network, which you can get for free till June 4th. Uh, you don't have to pay. So I've been enjoying listening to the CBC as some intelligent alternative to NPR and the rest of them. But uh, anyway, guys, I have, I have mentioned m uh, many times over the years on Humpty Dumpty Tribe that uh, on, on one hand, I, I am a, quote, alien abductee, or many people would consider me to be an alien abductee. I have had a 20-year personal relationship with uh, this phenomenon. Uh, you know, and it, my God, if YouTube had been available uh, in the mid-1990s, that for several years of my life in the 1990s, I was completely down the UFO space alien rabbit hole. Uh, thank God uh, for that. And, and I, I'm also dabbling around, although it's a slippery slope, I do not want to go back down that rabbit hole. But I might actually, since I'm floundering around down here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, start uh, occasionally reporting on what I consider to be some serious reporting on what is an absolutely fascinating phenomenon. And anybody who just, uh, you know, just waves off the whole subject of UFOs and, quote, space aliens as complete unadulterated horseshit, obviously, has spent no time, uh, you know, looking into the science, the science of ufology. Uh, and it, it needs to be treated a hell of a lot more seriously by both the scientific and the journalistic communities. It, it quite possibly is the it is the second biggest story on planet Earth, uh, and and if 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 one percent of the shit about uh, the, these UFOs it, it isn't shit, it, it is the second biggest story uh, in the history of humanity, right up there with the collapse of planet Earth. Uh, and I, I, I take the issue extremely seriously. The, of course, the problem is if you start going down this rabbit hole, you will find there is more of this uh, unadulterated horseshit uh, about UFOs on uh, YouTube and uh, all the rest of the place, you, you know, on social media, there, there, there is more unadulterated horseshit on uh, about this subject than any other subject. 99.9 percent .9 of uh, of what you will hear on YouTube is, is, is flat out unadulterated horseshit and uh, j just shoveling through, you know, the tsunami of, of unbelievable horseshit uh, out there.
uh, it, it, you know, that is what just makes this whole subject impossible uh, to, you know, to research intelligently. And it's finally the, you know, the reason that I got out of the rabbit hole myself is that, that I just got sick of the, just the over the top uh, uh, amount of, of horse shit uh, on, on this subject. You know, it, it's really unfortunate uh, the, the amount of, of, of horse shit uh, out there. It's, uh, th this is, as I say, it is the second biggest story on planet Earth right after the collapse of the planet and uh, since more and more I am turning over the first big biggest story on the planet over to Collapse Chronicles uh, I will probably be very carefully tiptoeing back into this uh, and so, if, if anybody out there wants to share what uh, they consider to be, you know, legitimate, genuine uh, information about this, uh, by all means, would you please uh, feel free to email it to me, send it to me at Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com and uh, we, will, we will talk about it but uh, other than that we're going to sit around and wait for these little fuckers to land on the White House lawn as they say of course we did not have a space alien land on the White House lawn we have one in the Oval Office, uh, the, the, the space aliens kind of overshot the lawn and ended up in the West Wing of the, uh, of, of the White House. And this is the reason uh, more than uh, that we're so fucked, more than invasion by space aliens, it's the invasion by the clueless morons. And I hope to hell that the space aliens get here PDQ to turn this freight train around because if they don't get here, we're fucked. They are, at this point, our only hope. Get out there and look for UFOs to come save your guilty ass while you still can. Bye, guys.